it's a getaway. You know, you're not going to see me here. I can get drunk. I can have a fight. I could do this. I can, you know, of course, depending on the person, I could be with my mistress. I can hug her. I could, you know, do whatever because this is a looser atmosphere. Arcade areas and beach areas have always been known in that way. So in Coney Island is no different. A little gentleman standing under a dragon. That picture I took the first day I ever went to Coney Island. I found him quite interesting because, first of all, he was very short. Secondly, he was wearing a, a suit and a hat. And I started to talk to him. And he told me his name was Little Louie. And he was going to the dentist that day to get his teeth fixed. Under the carriage is a, a whole carton of Heineken which I also find interesting. And then I waited, and lo and behold, this family walked by. All my pictures are untitled, but I call this family the family of the crooked mouths because all of their mouths look like someone may be eating a hot dog or something, and uh, the mouths were all going to, like, the left or the right, like that, you know. Photographs that have words in it, if you don't understand English, become meaningless but fortunately whenever I lecture people always laugh at this picture because like myself I can never figure out if she's in the beauty phase or the beast phase here because the ladies going behind like to untie her apron so it gives the, the viewer the possibility of thinking that she's you know transforming herself from one thing to the other I'm Jewish by birth but not religious. I've been married three times and all three of my wives have been, well, non-Jewish, let's put it like that. Two Catholic and the other one I'd like to forget about so I don't even know what she was, but um, I think it was Presbyterian. But my first wife, who was French-Canadian, said to me that this picture always reminded her of the Three Graces. This gentleman who's holding an inflatable plane and posing for me in the arcade area in between the, uh, I think it's Surf Avenue, the big avenue where Nathan's is in the boardwalk. I asked him if he'd mind, in holding valise, I asked him if he'd mind coming off the beach so I can take a portrait of him. And what I love is if you see his shoes, his shoes almost look like shoes that are made for a clown. What makes the picture is a gentleman in the back with his hands up like this, it almost looks like that Christ figure that's outside in Brazil in Rio de Janeiro. Okay, on the mountain, I've never been, I've just seen photographs of it. And you have two old ladies, one's wearing these sexy, I guess, sunglasses, and they're talking to each other, and one lady's holding a Pan Am bag. And this is the first picture that I ever took that I thought was good. So it's an important picture to me. And interestingly, there's a guy who you can just barely see his arm, and he wanted to get in a fight with me um, because I was taking his picture, which, I, you know, he's not even in the picture. So I said to him, as your father a glazier, you know, because uh, you can't see through this lady. I mean, she's not thin. I hope the viewer looks at my pictures and makes up little stories about what he sees in the frame. And in this, there's one gentleman, looks like a younger boy, in a bathing suit and he's closer to the camera and his head is bent down a little bit and then there's another gentleman with his hands and he looks like he's going to the guillotine or something like he's just had a death sentence there's a lady pointing her head is cut off and she's got a bra on that probably serves as a bathing suit well, you know and she looks like from Eastern Europe which are my roots so I can identify with her and what happened is that I was taking a picture of her. Her hands are on her hip and her belly and her breasts and the bra. And all of a sudden someone said to her, what is he photographing? And she pointed over there. He's photographing over there. So I was photographing her. But by pointing, she made the picture. This I call a bra strap. I like flat 
direct sunlight, you know, as the sun is going down before it gets too weak. And she's leaving the beach, and her bra strap is hanging out from under a floral patent shirt and on her arm. This is where you have to be careful where, you know, photographs can lie. Because if you look at this picture, there are three gentlemen in it. One is wearing a winter coat, and the other two are sitting there in bathing suits. One has a cigar, while well, one is exercising. In actuality, the only normal one is the uh, guy with the coat, because this is the Coney Island Polar Bear Club. So they're out in the middle of the winter, freezing their you-know-what's off, and the guy in the coat's looking at him and saying, you got to be crazy, man. You know, it may be sunny, but the temperature's probably about 20 degrees. I was photographing the bodybuilder on the right, the guy with the shaved head, and I was taking portraits of him, and he's posing for me, and he's got really these great cuts, and his head is shaved. It's, it's really interesting, but in reality, it's going to be quite a flat picture. So then, luckily, I saw an old man taking off his shirt. It was quite bony and thin and old and a little bit decrepit, I would say. And I said to the bodybuilder, would you mind posing next to him and he went over there and he did it. This is the way Coney Island would have been if someone went there in the 40s and the 50s. You don't see days like this very often in Coney Island any longer. Uh, these days the population has changed. At that time it was a lot of uh, Puerto Ricans, blacks, Eastern Europeans. Now you still have those but now you have people from India, you have Orientals, you have a lot from South and Central America. So I always say if you want to know the demographics of New York City you just have to go to Coney Island because the new influx of people come to Coney Island so you can see it all there. This picture I like a lot and um, the lady who's up front with the elbow sticking out she worked, I think, in factories her whole life. She hated me when I took this picture. She wasn't a very nice person. She was quite bitter because I think life passed her by. Here's a lady who has a reflector on her quite large breasts. And the only thing I really remember is she was telling stories. This is why I wish I had uh, the recorder because she was telling stories about, I, I don't know, it was weird. Um, I I'm not even going to say what it was, but it was quite risque, her stories, okay? And I was laughing hysterically because she didn't know me at all. She was talking to a friend. And she knew I was there because for this picture, I used a 24-millimeter lens. So I was on my knees, you know, because she's sitting on a chair or, or sitting on the beach and taking the picture. Dwayne Hansen sculpture, I call it. Because of the wall in the background, these two people look like they could be a sculpture. They may not even be alive. It's totally barren of life. The gentleman in the front here lying down looks like a beached whale. What I like about it is he has a bag that's on the beach next to him and it says Bohack. And I don't know if Bohack is still in existence, but in the 70s, Bohack was a very large uh, supermarket chain. So I always say he never leaves home without his bag of groceries. <laughs> I have fun with these pictures. It actually takes me back to my youth. These were two friends, or lovers, I guess. And what I liked is the Japanese guy who was... Uh, friend's belly is as big as the whole guy almost. It gives the appearance of it. That's not true. I'm really lying, but, uh, you know, for effect. It's quite a surreal picture for me because it's a very, very simple picture. But what I like about it, you know, he's on the beach alone at the jetty here, and he's got one leg up, and he's exercising. You know, so anywhere you can have your own personal exercise class or, give, you know, do what you have to do. I used to trudge along in uh, my construction boots and uh, a long sleeve vest. It's 90 degree weather. I was sweating like crazy. I probably wore a hat sometimes. You know, I had a thick head of hair at that time, not now, but long hair. And I never thought that uh, you know I could possibly wear a bathing suit or something. All I had was two camera bodies, which one was in my hand and the other was around my neck. And I had a light meter and about uh, 10 rolls of film because I used to shoot more film than, than I do now. But it never occurred to me to do anything differently, and I must have stood out like a sore thumb. You know, it's not like someone walking on the beach. This is a guy walking on the beach in construction boots, forgetting the two cameras, okay? Normally people might notice the camera, but here they notice the person. I 
have a tendency to get along very well with these kind of people, okay? No problem. I can get along with anybody if I want to, okay? I generally don't want to, okay? But if it's for photography, I could do it. And I know my personality is strong, and I know I can generally wheedle my way around the people in the situation. But I feel it, you know, I want to do it because I, I enjoy the, these people because it's not only a visual thing. My father was a character, so I guess I always liked characters.